Hello, Captains. I'm your host, USS Endeavor. And I just wanted to take a moment to explain a couple of things and answer some questions that you probably have had in relation to me. If you're subscribed to my channel, I don't think it's any revelation to you that I have been absent as of late. In fact, the last two, two and a half months, there's been virtually nothing from me. And I just need to say to everybody who is tuning in, who's watching this video, who has subscribed to me for a really long time, I am sorry. I feel like I owe you an explanation and I owe you an apology. For one, I could go on a big rant for why I haven't been making any content. Long story short, I personally just needed, wanted a break. And that's pretty much it. I'm fine. I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. Uh, my, fi my family is doing well. I'm doing well. I was uh, just getting kind of tired of the game for a couple of months and just wanted to take a break. Uh, I know this isn't an airport and you don't have to announce your departure, but you as my audience who have tuned in to me and have subscribed to me, and I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you're one of those, and if you're not, um, I can understand why you haven't, but... I just wanted to tell you from me to you, I'm sorry for being absent and for not even telling you why. And to be completely honest, the reason why I'm coming back is because of you. I've missed my community, I've missed this audience, and I've missed making content for you guys and gals. And I want to get back to that. So if you'll have me, I want to come back. So with all that being said, I want to get to today's guest which is the Plymouth, and it's a very special build in which I have been fine-tuning, and I want to showcase it for you now. So our commander is one that you may not have. It is a special event commander for the Transformers Hot Rod, which has a very unique base perk, which gets our radar back a little bit quicker. Uh, our inspirations are Makawa and Mueller which is going to help with our concealment and speed. And then everything else is like a agile build except for this, which also reduces our air detectability range and our radar duration. And I've got it maxed out. Even though it's a 16-3 commander, this perk is maxed out, which gives me my radar back 10%, or it extends the range rather, 10% more. So we'll take a look at that. Aiming Systems Mod 1 in the first slot. Second, we have Steering Gears Mod 2 because it comes with the propulsion uh, stock with the Brits. Concealment Mod in the third slot. And in our fourth, we have really gone legendary for the Main Battery Mod 3, which is going to help with our overall reload and damage for each kill we get. Our Damage Control Party only lasts for 5 seconds. You get it back in about a minute. Our repairs, we have four of them, but you're, they're not really all that great. They're pretty standard. You don't get a super heal. Sonar, 4.9 kilometer detection for ships. And the radar, which is what makes this a very unique build and why I chose this commander specifically. 9.9 .9 kilometer detection radar for 44 seconds, and I get three of them. Yikes. Beware destroyers. On to the... Actual stats themselves, 41,000 hit points for your survivability is not really all that special. It's not a lot, really, for Tier 7. And when you take a look at the armor, you can see how little that actually is. 21% damage for reduction for your torpedoes is actually pretty nice. On to the artillery. You've got 12 sh 152 short-fused AP rounds. They hurt if you are a lightly armored target. They reload in just under 6 seconds with this build, and they get faster as you go as you get more damage because of our uh, legendary mod that we've spent steel to get. On to the next one, which is our torpedoes. You do get them. Four on either side. You can shoot them tube by tube. 10 kilometer range, 62 knot speed, decent damage. They're, I would call these defense torpedoes, and you can zone a little bit with them but the art their main guns are the best part of this ship a defense is not all that fantastic and for a british cruiser it's uh on the lower end 
on the AA front, if you can say that. Um, not all the great, not the greatest. You're not going to shoot down a ton of planes with this ship. Your your maneuverability thirty five point three knots with this build because of Mueller, we get a little bit extra speed. Six hundred and eighty meter turning circle radius is pretty good, um, and six point five second rudder shift time is more than fine. Onto the concealment, nine point seven kilometer detection by sea, and that means that we have a stealth radar build. Our detection range by air is 4.9 kilometers. Our AA starts at 5 kilometers. It's not the greatest AA, but anytime we get detected by planes, our AA is immediately going to start going off. So this thing is really, really good from a stealth radar perspective. The only downside is, is you got to give up your smoke in order to make that work. And as you can see, I haven't all been playing with this configuration in mind, but I do pretty darn well in this ship and it is pretty cracked. Onto the armor, not a lot. Think Minotaur armor. It's not as bad as the Minotaur, um, but it is susceptible like the Minotaur. Here's a look at the Citadel with everything stripped away. You do have sections that are weaker on the top of your Citadel. It does get thicker ab uh, above the turrets. It doesn't extend the full length of the ship, and it does sit slightly above the water. All right, captains, we are on the map Land of Fire. We are by ourselves. There's a couple of divisions in this game. And if you're observant in the Cleveland, you've got Wow's Legends Memes, who has his own YouTube channel. If you enjoy meme videos and legend ships, he puts them together and makes some pretty funny, wacky videos using memes. And it's quite hilarious. So check him out. The YouTube uh, channel is exactly his name. Onto the game, though, because we have a stealth radar build, and I, I didn't exactly explain that earlier when I was going over the stats. For those of you who are not aware or don't understand the terminology, a stealth radar build is any build that your radar is more than your detectability. So the range on the radar is 9.9 .9 kilometers, our detection is 9.7 kilometers. So as long as I don't shoot my guns, because once you shoot, your detection ring goes out until either you don't get spotted or the duration goes by, which I believe is 20 seconds until you're no longer detected and it shrinks back down. If anything spots you without you shooting, you know that something is within 9.7 your radar will essentially be able to detect whatever that is. Here we're spotted, and it's the Achilles. And I'm about to expose the heel on this thing. Get it, Achilles heel. Uh, I don't even have to pop my radar. He is close enough for my hydro to be effective. He made a massive mistake coming around this corner, and like I said, these short fused AP rounds, they hurt. If you are in a destroyer, well, that could happen. Uh, a devastating strike along with the first blood. He comes around the corner, doesn't even suspect me because he couldn't see me, and unfortunately pays the ultimate price. So you got to be aware that the it is a possibility that if you see a Plymouth, they're running something similar to what I'm running. And the hydro, the radar, and the short-fused AP rounds... As a combination, it'll make your destroyer go boom. Anyway, as he is down and we take the early lead, unfortunately, WoW's Legends Memes also takes out a destroyer. So both of us doing the cruiser roll, effectively taking out destroyers on either side. We had our Hydra running in case the Achilles decide to shoot torpedoes our direction, but he didn't. Now we're just going to slowly back into the cap because we need to take we need to take alpha and it looks like uh they're taking bravo nobody is even in charlie yet so it's very imperative that we take this cap and because the destroyer threat is gone the only thing that can essentially detect me um is the carrier which is on the opposite team i did fail to mention that uh there's this is a carrier match and so there, there's just that but like I said, 4.9 detection is when I get detected by air, which is really, really short. 
Uh, one of the things that I really like about Hot Rod is he really reduces your overall detection while increasing the effectiveness and duration and reload of your radar. So definitely something to keep in mind. If you like builds like this, Hot Rod, you can't go wrong with them. So now that we have Alpha Cap, we really don't have a need to stay here. There, the Aoba pops up. And I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Aoba's tier 5, Plymouth is tier 7. Why in the world? Well, there's only one explanation. The enemy team failed division, which means that they had a tier 6 and a tier 5 division together, which the game will allow you to do. But unfortunately, you can get stuck in situations like this if you're in that tier 5 going up against a bunch of tier 6s, which are already tough. And then you add a bunch of tier 7s into the mix, and now you've really handicapped yourself. So, not advisable. Uh, unless you just really, really like the challenge. And I'm thinking that Aoba doesn't really like the challenge. He's not having a whole lot of fun. Uh, he's almost dead. So we're going to leave him alone for right now. Right now, we just need to reposition. I want to get over to Bravo because in the back of my mind, I realize that that's where WoW's Legends memes was. But unfortunately, he's already dead. So I don't even really get the benefit of going up against him, which is a shame. I kind of wanted to take him out. But he got taken out and uh, I don't have that option. So now we're just gonna kind of mosey on out here. And if I'm being honest, this is a bit of a mistake. I felt like the Iowa was focusing the other battleship, but he's actually looking right at me and takes a shot at me with his back turrets and hits us pretty good with just his back turrets. I tried to angle out, but in doing so, I run smack dab into an island. Who put that thing there? And here is where I'm thinking, well, my game's done. I, I'm pretty much dead. But I'm also running Ingenious, which tells me when I am being targeted, like right there. I am being targeted by Iowa now. But he's only shooting me with his back turret. He's kind of doing double duty. He's looking at me and shooting me with the back turret because it's the only turret that he can get... Well, it's not the only turret he can get on me. He's really focusing on that battleship that's right in front of him which is really my only saving grace. It's the only reason why I stayed alive as long as I did. I feel like if he would have focused me completely, there's no reason why he could have taken us off the board. Also, another thing I want to point out, I forgot to mention this earlier. I am not running the legendary mod on this particular game. I'm only running the epic mod, so I'm only going to be getting a reduction on my reload for my main battery. I don't get the extra damage in this game. Uh, it is something that I added um, that you'll see in the second video. So this video is just the epic mod. So I failed to mention that because I just got a kill and I don't have the increased damage. So that's why. Now that the Iowa is dead, we actually are kind of a little bit in a hole they didn't take bravo cap which is the only reason why we have a lead at this point but we are down in ships however because there are no more destroyers i am from what i can tell the lowest concealed ship on my team probably in the game so unless of course you take the aoba into account which theoretically it's possible he has a better concealment than me although not very likely. So my job at this point is to get into Bravo if I can. That constellation out there was divisioned up with uh, Legends or Wild's Legends memes, so I have to be careful. He is a really he has to be a really good player if he's divisioned up with that guy. Uh, but he has taken quite a wallop and the constellation is really susceptible of being punched through the bow by other battleships. And he is tucking tail and running at this point. And he just got hit there. So he is pretty much out of the game. And yes, there he goes. So now that he's down, uh, Bravo is going to be a lot easier for me to kind of come in there. Plus, I also have a battleship that's literally on life support right outside Charlie on our team that could potentially spot anything coming around that corner for me, albeit probably briefly. 
So my main purpose and goal is just to get into Bravo. I want to get it capped. And this is the strong point of the concealment. If you don't have this type of build, I don't think you can really make this play. The Colorado coming around the corner more than likely would be right at my spotting range if I was in any other type of build. But because I'm in this one, technically this play is safe. Albeit, the Colorado looks like he's on a straight line track to Bravo. And because of that, eventually he is going to spot me. Now we are tied in ships. Here we're going to shoot some tube by tube launchers at the Colorado as he just gets shellacked by something on our team. Very much appreciated. So we're going to go ahead and open up because why? Uh, in the moment, I don't know. Maybe I was just getting a little too impatient. I am known to be a little bit impatient. I also had the planes that were kind of coming right at me too. So eventually I was going to get spotted. And maybe that was my methodology and thinking in the moment. So we got all these ships that are out here. They're all converging on Bravo from our team and their team. So it is a bit of a firefight right here in the middle, which I love. Miss out on the kill right there, but that's okay. He's down, and that's really what I am most interested in. We get we go unspotted, so I feel comfortable with burning my damage con and healing. Like I said, the heals on this ship, not the greatest. Uh, what we have left, though, are fire spamming ships. You got a Mogami out there. You also have a Suzuya. And you also have the carrier, which is behind me. I'm not focusing him right now. We have a ship on our team that is making a play towards their carrier. So I'm going to leave him alone to that and just focus on this cap. Because our battleship, as you can see out there, is very low. He's basically a one-shot for any of these cruisers the aoba is not much of a threat but he is technically points that we could obtain and i'm hoping to just kind of yank him off uh in the distance here unfortunately i'm not able to do it so we've got the mogami and another mogami that is left i thought it was a suzuya it's two mogamis and an aoba so a couple of japanese fire spamming ships which if they use their he could spell a little bit of problems for us but two of their three remaining cruisers are pretty darn low and this ap could shred them as if they stay broadside like that but i will say one of the downsides to the plymouth is that these shells float rather at range they they float for a while so even when you think you've got them dead to rights a shot like this one right here I felt like I let him just enough, and he's still outpacing my shells, and I only get one hit out of the eight that I shot. I only got one, so I had to readjust. Still don't take him out. It's a little frustrating. These things can be a little bit inaccurate at range, but we finally do clean him up, and we get that kill. The Mogami, I felt like I was going to kill him as well. Again, these shells, they float. I, I'm not adjusting very well. Uh, the speed of the Japanese ships and the mobility can sometimes make this not easy of a target to hit, especially at distance. The reason why I have this built and set up the way that I do is mainly because I like taking out destroyers. I like surprising them, and I like ma making their day pretty miserable. And in that role, it works very, very well but I'm dealing with ships that are a little bit at range. And as you get closer, the Plymouth gets a lot more deadly with its shells and its AP rounds, especially if you're gonna stay broadside. Angled could be a problem. Bow in is really the best way to take uh, the firepower away from the Plymouth, because then you render most of the shells pretty useless other than superstructure hits. But there we get four kills, just shy of 3,000 base XP in a win. That's the first game. All right, Captains, for game two, are you ready for a fun one? Because I feel like you guys need one. This one's going to be pretty fun. It's going to be like, it's going to get a little silly, and there's going to be things that I don't exactly do right. I don't advise what is about to happen, but I said, heck with it, let's do it. 
It is a tier 7, tier 6 lobby, so I am going to be pushing into Delta Cap because that's where I spawn from. And oddly enough, I am going to be getting some rather good support, not just from this Jaeger, but more importantly from the Lennon behind me. So I'll just kind of preface and say that I'm going to be going smack dab in the middle of Delta. That small island that is right kind of in the middle of it, I'm going for that. And I'm hoping I'm going to run into one of the three destroyers that's over here. I have no idea which one it is. And the linen does a great job of not following me. Instead, he decides to go around this big hunk of rock in front of us. And he's going to take the left approach. And my hope is that he's going to support me over there. I know when you team up with randoms there is absolutely no guarantee that you are going to get the support that you are hoping for but I can just go ahead and tell you right here and now he does give me that support and sometimes you got to take a leap of faith and that's exactly what I do I see where he's heading so I'm like screw it I'm gonna go into Delta the Jaeger who I thought was gonna go into Delta instead just blankets the cap with torpedoes which I don't mind, but he doesn't make a play for the cap. And because I have the low concealment, I know that anytime I get spotted, it's because a destroyer's in front of me, and then I have the opportunity to take them by surprise with my radar. Because most people, I would say, don't expect the Plymouth to be running a radar build. As we get spotted, I let my team know, more importantly, the Lennon, who says that he acknowledges... And I'm spotted and I'm targeted briefly there. Now I'm not. And I get retargeted again. At this point, I'm like, I need to get behind that island or at least block the destroyer's line of sight so I can maneuver a little bit better into the cap. As you saw briefly, there was a constellation that is on the other side of Delta in front of the big rock outside of the cap. He is making his way on the left-hand side, but because the Lennon is positioning himself where he is, I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be okay. Now that I see that it's a Friesland, I did pop my Hydro because I was expecting torpedoes, not knowing that it was the Friesland. He doesn't have torpedoes. But now he smokes up because he's spotted by the Jaeger. He thinks he's going to be getting a free Hydro smoke combo off, but no I have him radared, and now he is permanently stuck for 44 seconds in my trap. He is trying to take shots, but I am backing up that Jaeger as much as I possibly can. The Jaeger does disengage. He's running away, and the Friesland makes a mistake in turning slightly broadside to me. He opens himself up. I knock his rudder, and now I'm going to finish him off for the first kill, the first blood, and I get a notch on the damage for me. So now my damage goes up 5%. Like I said, I am running that in this game. And now I have this constellation that's in front of me. He has 406 millimeter guns. I cannot bow tank him. So I am definitely needing support from this Lennon, who is more than happy to oblige. He is really the only thing that's going to help me. Plus I've got these other two battleships that are off my right hand side. So I'll be quite honest. If the Constellation wanted me dead, I think he could have had me dead. It's only because the Linen is splitting his attention between me and him that I'm alive. And then the Shimanto shows up and wants to join the fray. Now the Constellation has radar, has torpedoes, and has 406 millimeter guns. I get away with one right there. And then I get away with a little bit right there too. I pop my heal because I need to get it back. The Shimanto coming in could be a problem. The Constellation decides to tuck tail and run, which I get because he's going up against me and a Lennon. The Shimanto is getting awfully squirrely, making his way in here. He decides to turn broadside to me, which is not smart if you're going up against this thing. That is exactly what I would like you to do because then I'm able to start chunking you like that. But he is now turning away. The linen hits him good but doesn't delete him. So now he's backing out. And I've got both of these 
battleships that are also encroaching on my position. The island is the only thing that's got me protected at this point. So it's basically me and this linen up against these four ships. And I got to be honest, I thought I was dead. I should have been dead. These torpedoes are now coming in from the Shimanto. We are able to stop enough to be able to dodge them. That could have been pretty bad because those torpedoes do hurt. And now I've got the hood coming around trying to get at my broadside. I'm going to throw a couple torpedoes. Not sure exactly what he's going to do. I save one more just in case. I get a full shot into his broadside and take him out. Now I've got two stacks of both on my reload and on my damage. So now I'm going to be getting 10% extra damage. The Shimanto is backing out. We're going to take one more shot before we're going to go around the corner. And the Flandre, which is basically one shot, but it's burning. I take a shot, but unfortunately he burns out before I can yank that kill. Uh, you know, extra damage doesn't hurt. And technically that really wasn't my kill, so I'm not going to get mad at that. I'm just glad he's dead. The Lennon has been a tremendous help. I couldn't have made or survived like I did if it wasn't for him. So, very much appreciate you, Lennon. Thank you, sir, for all of your help. Or lady, depending on who's running the captain there. So, here we're going to push in. We're going to get this cap. And both the Shimato and the Con Constellation are still alive. But they're pretty low. And as you can see, there are two of the remaining three ships left. This game was a bit of a one-sided affair. But two-thirds of the enemy team came to me. So, I that's why I focused and featured this video because it was fun and it was a lot of action and we could have died at any point and it got a little stressful at one point but I had the help and two versus a lot was pretty cool there we're able to clean up the Shimanto and we get a third kill and I know that the constellation is coming around the corner he's really close so now we're going to get our torpedoes and our guns into play now we have 15 percent extra damage which is really going to help us against this guy. And if he stays broadside, it's going to make it even easier to take this guy out. So he has got a good shot into us. We are a little angled and we are able to survive the dev strike against us. He does throw torpedoes at us, but we see them coming. So we dodge. He is going to turn in, but it's a little too late. We anticipated that turn and we take him out with our torpedoes. And that's our fourth kill. There's only one ship left. But unfortunately, that destroyer is way off in the distance. We're not even going to get a chance at him. So that's going to wrap it up for me as far as this game goes. I just wanted to take this time again just to reiterate how much I have missed you guys and gals. Again, I am sorry for ghosting all of you. I shouldn't have done that. I should have at least announced that I was doing okay and that everything was fine, that I was just taking a break. And for those of you who are worried, please don't be. For those of you who weren't worried and don't care, well, I get that too. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, wonderful afternoon, wonderful evening, wonderful morning, wherever you guys are and gals. And just know that I am excited to get back on the horse, so to speak, bring you guys some content and try to get back onto this YouTube thing. So thank you again, Captains. Again, just shy and four kills yet again. <laughs> Two games back to back. Almost the exact same score, same kills. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. And that is the build with a stealth radar build. So let me know what you thought, Captains. If you don't mind, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. If you are subscribed, thanks for sticking around. And comment below. I always love to hear from you guys and gals. Until next time. This is the USS Endeavor signing off.